Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today combines a deep spirituality with the chairmanship of one of India's leading publishing houses, Bennett Coleman Limited, who publish the Times of India newspaper, the second largest daily newspaper in the world, the publishers of the Economic Times, Filmfare, Femina, they run television channels, she heads the Times Foundation and has recently launched a oneness initiative, a oneness forum. Her most enduring image for most of us in the media has really been at the United Nations Millennium Summit for Spiritual Leaders where she presided over a session and held forth uh, India's flag for spiritual diversity. I'm delighted to welcome Indu Jain. <laughs> Tell me, you embody a deep personal spirituality, and, and it sort of it, it, it reflects on, on, on your personality and what you do. So, what is what is this dimension of, of, of spirituality for you? Oh, this the dimension, every dimension. You know, the beauty part of it is not that uh, only one aspect I call it is spiritual, and other aspect is non-spiritual. So, um, in life. Whatever step I take, every step is nothing but reaching towards the spiritual touch, giving the touch of spirituality. What is this aspiration of spirituality to be, you know, a good human being, to, uh, to achieve what? What is the goal of your personal spirituality? To be happy? To look beautiful. <laughs> 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 and it's not, uh, and be happy. It's not just uh, uh, fe feeling happy and doing something to make others happy, but just be happy. And that's what it works, I feel. So what is the, you know, what is the spirituality involved? What is the practice? What is the sadhana uh, of your spirituality? That is a very good secret for <laughs> me, because uh, I think I was meant for many, many gurus, many, many masters from the childhood. I think I would not have left any of the top saints of the world. And I feel as my nature goes that uh, uh, everyone has to open up a different aspect in my life. Say Ravi Shankar ji has given me so much of uh, joy, love and compassion all around. Dalai Lama of course, the, you know, understanding the people with the heart and Jaggi Vasudeva, heart fast Kriya Yogas like that and Kalki of Bhagwan from um, say Chennai, it is a oneness university and that's what has given me a very big nice opening for all the people, those who have touch of his spirituality. I think the great thing about the Indian tradition of spirituality is not only does it teach you ideas, but like you mentioned Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and, and many other teachers, there are specific techniques for the cultivation and the development of these states of mind and, and attitudes. Yeah. So what, is, what, what, what technique do you follow? I have followed <laughs> like uh, Lord Shiva taught 112 techniques of Parvati. I must have been Parvati in the last. <laughs> so I know most of the techniques and why it is so beneficial ki in whatever mood I am, in whatever uh, place I am, in whatever situation I am, I can handle it so beautifully, not because of one doctrine I know, because many I know. How to handle my anger, my emotions, my care to other people, my relationship. So they have contributed, rather they all jointly somehow groomed me. I am very fortunate. So in this spiritual journey, do you still feel there is a lack, uh, you know, some, 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 some other aspects of, of emotion or striving that you have to uh, you, you know, overcome? A uh, few days before I could say so, but after uh, knowing Thich Nhat yeah. the Buddhist aspect. So in whichever aspect I am, I am simply the observer, I am simply watching it and it is a mindfulness. So it does not bother me, if something is lacking, then lackingness is also the part of the universe, though it is also completeness. So. That is the beauty uh, that whatever is happening is, so it is. So accept it very nicely. 
What about in terms of the external manifestation of the spirituality? You run the Times Foundation, you run the one, you know, Oneness Initiative. You, you, you have many agendas in the external many. world yes. beyond the personal ones. Yes. So what, what do they all add up to for you? What, what are they reaching out to? What, what change? What do you want to achieve through all these things that you do? You see, I think it's a human nature. Ki if I get anything very beautiful and very valuable, you always want to share. So either in a limited way, you share with your children and the family, but somehow now I feel the whole, whole globe is my family. So I want to reach out everyone and tell them to make the choice according to their nature. Because I have gone through with many masters. So I cannot compel them to know this is the best. According to the nature, so I want to reach out everyone to choose and see and then go accordingly. As Rama said to Lakshmana, that uh, know thy nature. And if we respect our nature, I think the enlightenment is very close to so us. So know thy nature. What is your nature? My nature is versatility. <laughs> <laughs> I am a very moving person. Though I, I can say it is a very beautiful stillness within me. But I cannot uh, remain at one doctrine, one place, one something. From there, I always take out variety of the different flow, different dimensions, different areas. Mm -hmm. I you know what does just being uh, uh, the heritage of, of, of Mahavira and, and, and Jain in some way circumscribe this for you? Uh, yeah, I have come from the Vaishnava as before marriage, but after marriage, I adopted Jain doctrine very nicely because it was something like very scientific. And the first time I explored about the soul, the, there are two aspects in the life. One is the Vahvara aspect, the way you uh, act around the world, but in what aspect you act, that is the Nishche. It's my uh, soul, it's my self, it's my, the island of my depth from where I'm functioning. So that as of course is a very big foundation for me. To function from where, that's the beauty part. Beyond your personal experience with different traditions and different faiths, uh, what do you feel is, is, is the underlying basis that we may use to celebrate diversity? Because ultimately, in a, in, a, in a fractured world where there is so much religious conflict, uh, your personal journey has been through many gurus. But it seems to me they have largely been through a tradition of uh, sort of, you know, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, uh, that tradition. Yes. What about the other traditions, uh, you know, beyond that? You see, I think it is uh, the thing I have caught is beyond tradition, or rather every tradition accepts it, is the mindfulness is the awareness. Every religion is of course for awareness and for the mindfulness. So it is such a common link, but of course many people expressing it differently. They, uh, as they have got, as they have mastered, so according to that they make us catch the mindfulness. And uh, I am fortunate that I can catch this awareness in all sorts of uh, my ways and means. So this, you know, this oneness uh, initiative and, and, and program that you've got, which is looking at sort of unity uh, in, in a sense, uh, how would you approach, you know, for example, you know, Islam is seen as, as a sort of source of great conflict at the present time. Uh, we're in conflict um, uh, in a largely, uh, you know, a lot of people say out of a misunderstanding uh, of Islam. And there was this recent, uh, uh, you know, quote from the Prime Minister of India who, who, was, who was saying that how when President Bush was introducing him and his wife to Laura Bush, he said, well, you know, he comes from the country of 150 million Muslims and not one of them has joined the Al-Qaeda. So there are obviously different brands of Islam. Now, someone who is working uh, so consciously to bring about peace between religions. What are the elements that, uh, that you feel can achieve this? I would say that uh, the aim of oneness is uh, peace within first. The aspect behind that ki peace within first. The oneness tells that no one have respect for all the doctrines as we respect all the sciences. So this is little, no difference, this is, though that is outer science and this is the inner sciences. So we must know and respect 
all the doctrines of the inner sciences. So that's the aim of the oneness. And we, this is our first beginning program of the peace celebration. And of course, Gandhi has started from India and will reach out to the whole world. You're watching a conversation with Indu Jain. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. हमने अपने हाथों से अपनों को सताया मासूमों को रुलाया पर तोड़ने वालों से है ज्यादा जोड़ने वालों की तादाद चल पड़ा है मन का कारवा सरहदों को पार कर पैगाम मोहब्बत का लिए हर हदों को पार कर यहाँ है भाई भाई में विश्वास और हमें है अपनी जिम्मेदारी का एहसास एहसास के प्रायोजक हैं आई कार्ड दिखाओ निन्यानवे रुपए में मोबाइल हो जाओ सेलवन फ्रॉम बी एस एन एल वेलकम बैक टू कंटिन्यूइंग कॉन्वर्सेशन विद इंदू जैन स्पिरिचुअल एक्टिविस्ट एंड chairperson of the times of india group of companies uh, in the ji you you know you've um, you know talked about how when you were approaching 70 and and, and i apologize for raising yeah. the issue of your age uh, on a television <laughs> oh, program i feel very proud about it <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know your sons you know drew you into the fold and 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 had you become chairperson of of the times of india uh, a group did you find or feel that somehow engaging in the processes of business uh was antithetical to your spiritual uh you know pursuits oh not at all uh, first of all let me say my children because putting me and uh, giving me this position they made me feel very young and uh, they gave me the field to express whatever i have learned otherwise you can learn and sit in the himalayas and all right shanti shanti it has no meaning among the conflicts among the no arguments among um, the people not obeying you at that time if i can keep up uh, with my smile within outside of course i have to <laughs> show something and uh, that's how i feel very great and it's not at all a work it's a uh, feel to express but you know the the media is increasingly being accused of uh, you know vulgarity you know the times of india is a media house that has to succeed commercially ultimately yes. and you know there is talk about what page 3 is projecting uh, <laughs> you know the, the group is running television channels yeah. and and somehow that seems at odds with your personal you know aspirations and the kind of person you obviously are not at all so explain this to us <laughs> you see uh, uh, media gives the exposure okay but these children or the people their taste has come to this level because of the so many years of not giving values in the education not caring for the youth you know their development and especially the secularism i think that has hampered lot of the values in our india's life so this thing to uh, come up with the positivity this is what i feel when i sit on that chair i feel ki that whatever words you use ki it is uh, obscene and this and that so first we have to be friendly to our reader where he stands and once he gets habituated to my paper then we'll take them to the higher heights otherwise they won't listen if from today suppose we start giving them summons and all that now you just see uh, uh, we give them what they are today but we are taking them to their future growth by speaking tree by a secret space and now in every paper you will find if we have a slot and they are accepting few months before they may not have accepted us 
But in the in the larger context, and this is really not just about you know the Times of India group. Yeah, uh, it is it is happening that a lot of people hold the media responsible. Uh, for the erosion of values. Very um, easy. <laughs> hold media responsible, that's not right. Hold the whole nation is responsible about it. What they have made the society is not media has made it. It is they have made children, our children in schools and the system, it has made them. Media is simply reporting you. And that is the, I would say, very intelligent move of our paper to first be friendly with them and then make them move. And who else is doing it? But Times of India. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, um, the Indian tradition in many ways has had sort of two aspects to it. One is that it celebrates abundance and the other it, it also sort of celebrates austerity and what have you. So has, has abundance been an inhibitor uh, for your own spiritual progress and growth, the fact that, you know, you have Times of India, you know, so many businesses, so much money, so much personal sort of access to wealth and resources and comfort. Uh, has that sort of been an obstacle or an asset in your spiritual striving? You see, <clears throat> I have got one, our, one of the very uh, loving peace and prosperity for women's empowerment. I don't believe only in the peace. Unless our nation, our families, our individuals are prosper, we cannot talk about the non-violence and the peace. So if my paper, I would like to many other, all my friendly papers also reach that level of prosperity, I think that's contribution to India. I'm talking beyond the paper. I mean, you know, I understand. Beyond the paper. The paper. Yes. I mean, okay. at, at a personal level, you know, we have always held, you know, Gandhiji was this, you know, symbol of wearing a loin cloth and great yeah, simplicity. Yeah, yeah, we have revered the simplicity <laughs> of our saints. <laughs> All right. And that's the part of the, when we are celebrating from the 2nd October, uh -huh. we are taking Gandhi in front of, what is the great relevance of Gandhi today? Not only that Tyagi Baba. Mm -hmm. So what he has taught us to be absolutely totally well equipped with everything whatever is in fashion today look at me <laughs> <laughs> i'm not uh, after spirituality i have become something leave this leave that what to leave yeah. it is accepting everything uh -huh. it is as many things i can accept and put it into my the you know lap yeah. and nurture it yeah. and give it back to the world that's what i call the spirituality and that's what i call the peace and you'll enjoy this, the methods we have adopted to celebrate this peace festival. And uh, the response all over the world was excellent. Everyone but you wanted to join us. I'm sure in future they will, uh, they'll gain a lot uh, within because the peace within first. You've also been involved with uh, the, you know, you mentioned the empowerment of women and you had a forum at, at one point that was looking at women spiritual leaders. Uh, yes. And, and, you know, here you are, uh, you know, a, a woman spiritual activist. <laughs> uh, wh wh why would you say in, in India that on the one hand, you know, we have women are revered as goddesses, as, as, as heads of faith, and at the same time there is so much exploitation uh, of women. And as a woman, how, how, do you, how do you feel about this and what do you want to do about it? I just say, wake up, oh woman, wake up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, don't accept these shackles of the jewellery only. Uh -huh. This is a trick of the man to put you into uh, just uh -huh. the cool uh -huh. at home only. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, woman has to help the woman. This is, we are awakening. Our organization is working wonders and uh, many aspects they are touching from schools to the absolutely to the uh, even uh, climbing mountains. So these uh, exposures should be provided to our women. And uh, do you know what slogan we are giving to our women? You should be compassionate enough to leave 30% for men. <laughs> <laughs> so would you describe yourself then as a spiritual feminist? You may spray <laughs> anything you like to describe, I always accept. <laughs> no difference. But would you, would, do you see yourself in, this, in, in the role of a feminist? From the childhood, yes, I was very much. 
any mother-in-law troubling the daughter-in-law, <laughs> uh, my blood will boil. But one of the master told me, if you want to work, first be cool within, have compassion from mother-in-laws or those who are troubling, and the young ones, the daughters and all that, then they will have a voice, your voice will be listened by them. So you can call. I am like that. So what kind but of mother-in-law? But now the quality you? have might have so changed. So what kind of mother-in-law are you? Oh, I'm very beautiful mother-in-law. So where I at least call and I ask my daughter-in-law. She says, "Now you call me daughter-in-love, <laughs> not daughter-in-law." <laughs> You're watching a conversation with Indu Jain. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. इस रविवार आमने सामने है छत्तीसगढ़ के मुख्यमंत्री रमन सिंह और विधानसभा में नेता विपक्ष महेंद्र कर्मा जो बोरा वो एक ट्रांजिट की है सरकार की सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि थी कि हमारी सरकार आ गई उसके पीछे कुछ न कुछ अब आपको विरासत में भी जिस बालकों का विरोध करता है उसके गोद में जाके बैठता है रविवार रात दस बजे आमने सामने केवल जी न्यूज आरोप Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Indu Jain, who's been described as a newspaper baroness and a spiritual activist. We were talking about daughter in love, and uh, <laughs> what is what 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 do you see as the basis of uh, of relationships? And and let's start perhaps. You know, you have different kinds of relationships. What about relationship with with the teacher, with with the guru? You have had so many gurus and then so many teachers. You've talked about. But we've also had a, an, a, a tradition in India of having, you know, a root guru, of a single guru that you surrender to this, but you learn from many. So, what are your relationships with your teachers? Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful relationship. And the basis is that whatever time I'm with whichever guru, starting from Mahesh Yogi Ji, I'll be 100 percent for that. And I learn with the 100 percent of the receiving mind. And now suppose I am now going to Kalki, the Chennai. So when I attended their classes, which was very, very tough, and uh, I had to uh, surrender totally, and I could surrender totally. And that's why I've achieved a lot by that uh, Oneness University. And everywhere, I think my nature is to be 100 percent wherever I am. That's the basis. So how does this process of surrender operate in everyday relationships with your family, with your children? In the beginning, uh, I would say one has to learn a lot how to keep the relationship perfect. And one of the greatest thing what I learned from the Buddhist tradition that uh, there are four beautiful mantras. First one is, darling, I am here for you. The second one is... Don't we all long to hear that? <laughs> <laughs> darling, you are there. How wonderful for me. Third one is, ki, darling, you are suffering and I am there for you. So who is this darling? You have to tell us. Your son, your um, sisters, your family members, your daughter-in-law, your husband or whatever. Any relationship in this. And the fourth one, which is very difficult to follow, it's, it, it, though it's in the line, the fourth one says, Ki, darling, I am suffering. Why you said such thing to me and I am angry, I'm trying to help myself, but please help me. Because this, to say, you have to leave your pride. Otherwise, generally the, our nature is, to punish the person who has, you know, made you unhappy. We will go in the room and say, no, don't touch me, no, why should? And suppose a poor fellow says, hey, can I help you, are you unhappy? We say, no, why should I be unhappy? I am, doesn't matter, leave me alone. This is our way to tackle this sort of conflicts. Now imagine this word, yes, I am suffering and I want you to know and I want your help. Now imagine which relationship will not improve after saying this thing from the heart, from the mindfulness, from the awareness and I think it will resolve within no time. What, how would you apply this principle uh, to institutions and, and, and resolution of larger conflicts? 
uh, because you know at, at, at one level apart from your personal spirituality you're now yeah. heading this organization and I'm sure there are contexts of innumerable conflicts and one of the things you've talked about is that one of your roles in the organization is to help resolve these conflicts so what principles do you use to do that communication with the heart and with the ears listen people this is and one thing very interesting I just reminded you now the children the peace trained children hundreds of them they are writing now the letters to the children of Pakistan and they are going to request our president to write a loving letter to the president of Pakistan. This is what a loving communication and hearing. I think if we hear each other properly with the absolutely with the energy of our love, energy of our compassion, I'm sure many of these conflicts can be resolved. This is uh, my experience and uh, this is how we are wanting to reach out many, many, many people like that key. Listen, listen with the heart. You've talked about how sort of you had a long uh, gestation period in a sense outside the limelight where the little, the, you know, the petals were opening and then at, at a relatively late stage sort of, you know, the blooming flower came into public view um, as, as an individual in your work. What more are you, are, you, are you seeking? You talked about mindfulness of just being aware. Do you just sort of see the flow of life just unfolding in front of you? Is, is there a seeking? Is there something that you want to, want to achieve? Because, I mean, even the Buddha, when he went, on, went into, the, in, into the forest, wanted enlightenment. Yeah. You know, the Dalai Lama wants to redu remove suffering in the world. You know, different people have different aspirations. What, what do you seek? One way my seeking is very satisfying that uh, there is nothing much to seek but still my seeking is not stopped. Wherever I move, I am learning something, some, something unfolding within me. And uh, uh, now uh, this, just, uh, this time of my life, I want to enjoy my senior citizenship utmost <laughs> and uh, tell people ki, reaching after 70s is very beautiful and this is a time to flirt <laughs> I'm waiting <laughs> tell me that in terms of the um, religious traditions there's a great deal of emphasis on death in in the buddhist tradition that you know you described yes. uh, there's the buddhist uh, you know, book of living and dying and, and, and that looks at, the, at, at at preparing for this process of uh, of moving on to the next life of reincarnation and I would assume that you believe in reincarnation yes. do you? Yes, I believe in the continuation everything is moving into the circle you know with my the, uh, since everything is nothing can de be destroyed so everything is moving in the circle so I'll also come back don't worry <laughs> <laughs> and uh, much more use for the world uh -huh. So I'm sure. what are you seeking in, 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 in the next life? What kind of birth would you like? That I do not much think about. Whatever divine will be taking birth through me and whichever need at that moment, that kind of otara comes. So don't say I'm egoistic. <laughs> but of course, every person is an avatara of the Lord. So whichever is the requirement of the earth at that time, that kind of role will be giving to that body and whichever is uh, fit enough will be me everywhere. <laughs> and what about death? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> You've talked about you know, how you would, you, 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 would, you would like to die in comfort on a satin pillow. Zindagi uh, ek movement hai. Or death se bhi uska silsila band nahi hota hai. Uh, death is uh, very fascinating to me and only thing I um, wish that I must able to be fully mindful to see how nicely I go out of this body and then become you know and the, the, the next life. <laughs> that, that, that I, <laughs> yes and see how I come back that awareness should be very very alert in my during my death and one thing very interesting, I told Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji, ki, they were talking about death. That, that one thing I am very sure, when death comes, I will say, wait, let me be very comfortable 
then you come <laughs> because I'm a very comfort oriented person. <laughs> Thank you very much. This has been a great honor and a great blessing.